Hey, it's Matt Housley from Ternary Data. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about the new AWS EC2 Mac instances that were just introduced at reInvent. Um, this is a little out of the scope of the things I usually cover. Uh, we're about all things data, analytics, big data, data science, machine learning, and such. Uh, but one of my friends was talking to me about potentially running a build on one of these cloud-based instances to run some code on her iPhone and doesn't have a Mac. Started playing around with these and figured I'd make a quick video about it. And of course, we're very interested in the cloud ecosystem. And so at the end, I'll talk a bit about what I think this might mean for the broader cloud ecosystem going forward. A quick word of warning if you're following along. Um, according to AWS, due to licensing restrictions, the minimum time they offer for a Mac Mini reservation is 24 hours. These run a little over a dollar an hour, so you end up paying about 26 bucks if you want to spend one of these machines up. Um, be aware of that in terms of sticker shock, and also be aware that after you're done, make sure to tear everything down so you don't get a surprise bill later. $26 is not terrible, but if you left that on for an entire month, it would start to get really expensive. Um, you have to delete both the virtual machine itself and the host, which is basically the physical Mac Mini hardware that you're reserving for that 24-hour period. Okay, without further ado, I'll get into our demo. Let me give you a quick shortcut here up front. Um, everything I'm covering today is in the Mac EC2 instances user guide. It actually took me a while to find this. Um, I had to dig around on some of their AMI documentation. It didn't come up right away in a Google search, and it was after flailing for a while trying to get the VNC video connection going that I dug a little more in the documentation. And so you could actually skip the video and just work through the steps in this guide if you wanted to. Setting up these instances is a little more complicated than it is for a usual EC2 instance because they're unvirtualized. And so uh, basically we have to rent an entire Mac Mini. We can't just rent a slice of one on some host machine. And so instead of just grabbing the instance, we first have to grab a dedicated host and then we set up an instance on that Mac Mini once we're done. Um, you can do each of these steps either in the AWS console or from the command line. I'm going to set up the dedicated host from the command line and then show you how to set up the instance itself from the console. And first I try to stand up a dedicated host in the US East 1A availability zone. And you see that I get um, a resource availability error. There's, there are no resources to be allocated. So there's an ongoing debate about the price effectiveness of these Mac Mini instances. But at least in the first couple of days after their launch, they're popular enough that quite a few availability zones have no available ca capacity. Um, I couldn't get one in 1B either. And finally, 1C, I'm able to get this to work. Okay, let's jump into the console. And from the EC2 interface, we'll select dedicated hosts. We can see that our host that we created from the command line shows up here. We still have to jump through a couple of slightly annoying hoops. We have to select an appropriate Mac AMI. And then there's only op one option for the instance type. And go through a couple of configuration details here. We'll configure a security group here, and I only need SSH access because I'm going to tunnel the VNC protocol to get GUI access over my SSH connection. And I'll configure that to allow access only from my IP address to be very secure. And I'll use an SSH key pair that I downloaded previously. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the instance. Let's try to SSH in. I have shell access, and my goal is to set up a GUI connection through the VNC protocol, so I need to create a password for the EC2 user to do that. Next, I need to run a couple of commands to start the VNC server on the Mac Mini and to allow remote desktop access for my connection. 
Okay, once that's done, I run another SSH command to tunnel the VNC protocol from localhost to the remote machine. Now I'm using the open command on my local shell to connect the Mac remote desktop client to localhost and therefore to the remote machine. Okay, once I have GUI access, I have to sign in again using the password I just created. And there we are. Our remote environment is up and running. Okay, one last bit of advice here. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, leaving these instances running can cost you a bit of money. So make sure that you clean up. And that means specifically that you need to terminate the instance that's running on the dedicated host and then release the dedicated host. And so I have instructions um, up here on the screen from the Mac instance user guide. Basically in the console, go to your instance screen, terminate there like you would a normal instance, but then make sure to take that last step of going to the hosts page and releasing the host. Okay, we now know how to get a Mac EC2 instance up and running. What does this have to do with the evolution of the cloud ecosystem that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? I have up on the screen a Mac Rumors article from May discussing Apple's efforts to hire cloud computing talent. There was speculation at the time that this could portend Apple's entry into the cloud infrastructure space. For a couple of reasons, I believe that this has become much more likely in the last couple of months. First, we saw the launch of the M1 MacBooks recently um, based on their exceptional performance and system on a chip integration. This means that Apple could develop uh, really extraordinary server chips in-house potentially to serve a variety of use cases. Uh, granted, CPU is only one vital component of cloud computing infrastructure, but that's why they've hired this other talent to potentially build out other parts of that infrastructure. Um, second, we now have several vendors that offer Mac systems in the cloud. Most recently, AWS, of course, but before that, we had an Azure offering along with Mac Stadium and several other small vendors that have been doing this for a while and seeing really good demand. Third, with the ongoing migration from Intel to ARM architectures, uh, developers are going to need to do a lot of testing on architectures that they may not own. So uh, they'll need to port their apps from Intel MacBooks to ARM MacBooks. If they don't want to buy a new laptop, then they'll need somewhere else to test. If they buy a new laptop, they may not want to keep their old one. They may not want to have a whole farm of devices around to test on. Um, and I, I think the last point here in terms of uh, infrastructure is that they have a built-in audience. And so it, initially they could develop a cloud product that just uh, targets backend for apps. And so backend for iPhone, Mac, iPad, apps, core infrastructure, uh, basic transactional databases, uh, cloud storage, object store type product, plus of course, lots of CPU power. Uh, and on top of that, they could potentially resurrect their, their XServe brand. Uh, XServe being a, a rack mount box that Apple had to run OS X as a server in the early days of OS X. Uh, potentially that brand name could come back as some kind of a cloud offering. So if Apple does make this move, uh, what does that have to do with data? Because data is the thing I actually care about. Um, generally don't use uh, Macs as server inf infrastructure ourselves. We, uh, we and many of our partners sometimes use the machines to do work for customers, but ultimately we tend to do work in the cloud on Linux systems for the most part, and sometimes Microsoft systems. So an Apple Cloud is unlikely to host any really sophisticated data product anytime soon. Um, generally, sophisticated data products come out down the line. You have to have really mature infrastructure before you start offering something like a Snowflake or an Amazon Redshift or a BigQuery or Hadoop, it takes a long time to get to that point. Um, but the point is there are some interesting indirect impacts. And here I'm very interested in the CPU space. Um, we've already seen the ARM architecture starting to encroach on the Intel architecture over the last couple of years. About two years ago, we saw AWS Graviton come out. And so that's an AWS processor that they offer through their A family instances. Uh, that family of ARM instances has gradually grown and gained a bigger following. And so if you have Apple pushing into the space, then I think we see even more growth of ARM processors 
across all cloud vendors. And more processor competition means better performance, lower prices, um, and ultimately better data products. We're just gonna see more powerful, more scalable data bases at a better price and more and more access to those products. Okay, that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching and hopefully y'all see you soon.